At this point in time, N9SA holds its nearly full attention on a daring lunar adventure. The limitations of current technology and launch capacity alongside an ever nearing deadline have caused the program to focus its efforts on landing a Kerbal on the surface of the moon. All of the challenges and unknowns that go with it as well. But there are two missions during this time period which look elsewhere in our solar system, far beyond the moon. The first of these is the Hermes-1 mission. Launching atop an MXL-01, Hermes has its eyes set on a flyby of the planet Mercury. Little is known of the world that resides closest to our sun, but with a little luck and precise planning, that will no longer be the case. of the Earth, Hermes plots its course towards Mercury, planning to utilize MXL's transfer stage to propel itself away from Earth's gravity well. A correction burn will then be performed by the probe itself to finally adjust its velocity to reach Mercury at the correct place and time to achieve a very low altitude flyby. burnout and separation of the transfer stage, communication is lost with Hermes. At first, the worst is assumed, but many hours later the probe appears to come online, reporting all things are nominal, other than an incorrect attitude for its correction maneuver. The cause for the blackout is determined to be not a problem at all, but an oversight in mission planning. Its S-band antenna was unable to properly view DSN sites on the surface of the Earth until much, much further away. With all systems go, Hermes resumes its operations by performing a mid-course correction. Hermes has been drifting through the void for over four months in constant, albeit slow, communication with ground stations on Earth. Now a long-awaited moment has finally arrived. Mercury is quickly approaching, and Hermes' scientific equipment is streaming the data back to Earth. The planet's gravity is 38% that of Earth's, and at interplanetary velocities, it would take a change of roughly 10,000 meters per second to capture into orbit of Mercury. And 9SA doesn't quite have the technology to pull this off yet. However, unlike the Raven 4 probes which flew by both Mars and Venus in the late 60s, the Hermes mission will not end after soaring past its initial target. By calculating its future trajectory and utilizing small velocity adjustments along the way, Hermes 1 over the course of many years will be the first spacecraft to fly past multiple different planets in the solar system, which ones specifically depend on future calculations. Over the course of its flight so far, 
mission planners have determined a small velocity adjustment at perihermion will be beneficial to achieving this goal someday in the future. The lowest altitude of this flyby, however, may just be lower than the folks back home realize. Nevertheless, Hermes orients itself for the short burn and screams past the surface of Mercury. 0.8 seconds before shutdown of the engines, communication is once again lost. Telemetry reports altitude increasing before the blackout, so an impact with the surface is not considered a possibility. Instead, and this is another side effect of dipping so close to the surface, line of sight with Earth is believed to be blocked by the surface of Mercury. Unfortunately, this means the engines will not be able to shut down until a connection is again restored. Reminiscent of the Basking Shark mission, which sealed its fate in lunar orbit due to the same line of sight blockage. Luckily, this blackout only lasts for one minute, and the probe's future operation is able to be saved. It will take some recalculations and additional planning but it is entirely possible Hermes-1 could fly past Venus in the next few years, and we will see what's possible from there. The scientific benefit of its future is less collecting and transmitting data, and more so experimenting with orbital trajectories. The probe carries along with it a lot of velocity, and theoretically, that velocity should be able to be used, utilizing gravity, to end up somewhere else in the solar system entirely somewhere unpredictable at this point in time. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. The second mission canonically launched a year later than Hermes, and its name may be familiar. In 1970, Flytrap 1 failed to reach orbit of the Earth. Soon after, Flytrap 2, an exact copy of the first, burned up in the atmosphere of Venus. Now, Flytrap 3 has been redesigned for the same purpose as the first two attempts, and that is to successfully land on the surface of Venus. Reaching orbit of the Earth via another MXL-01, Flytrap plots its transvenution trajectory. This mission has several differences compared to the previous Flytrap design, other than a much more capable launch vehicle of course. Structurally, the craft sports a buffer between itself and its heat shield as to minimize transference of probe melting heat as much as possible. Essentially, two heat shields are utilized to ensure mission success. The probe also lacks a lot of scientific equipment, choosing a rather bare-bones attempt at this feat than to go all-in without really knowing if reaching the surface of Venus is possible in the first place. This controversial decision lowers costs slightly, but greatly reduces scientific gain for the mission. But, as of launch, it is framed as a flight demonstration, and indeed it truly is. 
and NSA hopes to use Flytrap 3 to gather information about re-entry and descent as a forefront for future missions to Earth's sister planet. Should it succeed, much more complex and confident missions will take place without a doubt. Another difference is mission design itself. Flytrap 3 will not only utilize its upper stage for attitude control and re-entry orientation, but said transfer stage will carry with it enough fuel to capture into orbit of the planet before descending to its atmosphere. As such, Flytrap 3 will become the first space probe to orbit another planet of the solar system. Over five months has passed since the launch of Flytrap 3. Reaching Parasite, MXL's transfer stage captures into orbit of Venus. The upcoming plan to reach the surface is rather straightforward, but as always, with a catch. Mission planners want the landing to occur with connection to Earth, of course, and also on the day side of the planet. But the current eccentric orbit of Venus forces the only possible landing zone to be at night. As the probe will be solar powered upon reaching the surface, this isn't exactly ideal since a single day on Venus is 243 Earth days. So then, no problem, this eccentric orbit allows the probe to simply wait in orbit for its parasite to allow for a daytime landing. Initially, this planned parking orbit was to last roughly 90 to 100 days. However, halfway through this waiting period, a glaring problem was brought to light one that risked failure of the mission entirely if nothing was done. The transfer stage's fuel was boiling off in orbit of Venus faster than planned for, and by the time 90 to 100 days since orbital capture rolls around, all the fuel would be gone, and Flytrap would be stuck in orbit. Because of this, there is no other choice than to go for landing 40 some odd days early, at night, at the very least, the landing zone is expected to be somewhat close to sunrise. Approaching the atmosphere of Venus, Flytrap is oriented correctly for re-entry and released from its transfer stage. After which, a sudden panic ensued at ground control. It appears somebody in mission planning forgot to upload and commence an automated pushback maneuver for the transfer stage to perform. Without it, Flytrap will be practically glued to the top of the fuel tank until it melts and disintegrates in front of it, possibly damaging the heat shield and risking destroying the probe entirely. But all N9SA can do at this point is watch numbers come through on a screen and hope for the best.
Meta continues to stream back to Earth, showing Flytrap very slowly descending through the Venusian atmosphere. It survived, and after a long, excruciatingly long descent, Flytrap 3 approaches the mysterious surface of another atmospheric world. A warning light blares at ground control. One of the parachutes has refused to open, possibly melted shut. Moments later, data continues to be received. Flytrap has done it. We have landed on the surface of Venus. It can be done, and it will be done again. Cheers erupt back home. Flytrap unfurls its solar array during the alien night, and the mission is left a resounding success. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out. What did he